Okay, Antonio, it's time to make some rabbits on the edges of these boards. And just to clarify the terminology here, there's three types of cuts that are that make grooves in a board. In other words, wide channels that usually go halfway through the thickness of the wood. There's dados that'll go across the grain of the board. And if you wanna get technical, a groove is the exact same thing that goes along the grain of a board. A rabbit is the exact same thing, only it's on on the edge of a board, so it has like a shoulder. In the US, it's called a rabbit. In the UK, it's called a rebate, same thing. It's a very strong way to make a joint. It's my favorite way to make a box. Now to catch up on where we were, you should have four boards that you've already cut to their final sizes. These are gonna be the front and the back of the box, as well as the top and the bottom of the box. This board here is oversized. Remember, we haven't cut this down yet. This is gonna be the two short end pieces. So we're not gonna worry about that just yet. Divide these up into your top and bottom and then your front and your back. And you might wanna look at the grain and find out which piece you think looks nicest for, I would say the top is probably the part that you're gonna see the most. So find out whichever one you like the best and mark that top and then mark one of them bottom and then front and back. It's gonna be really helpful to have these labeled. I think I'm gonna use this piece for the top just because I like the way that the grain pretty much blends together between these two boards. And I also like these two knots here. They give it a little bit of character. So this will be my top. And I wanna use like the worst looking piece for the bottom because that won't be showing at all. These two pieces look good. I really like the grain that's happening here. So those will be front and back. This one, not so crazy about. I don't like the way that this one, it has a real nice, even straight grain. And then over here, it's got all this crazy looking grain. If this was repeated over here, it might look a little bit better, but I'm gonna use this one for the base or bottom. Front and back. There's a number of different methods for making dados and rabbits. My favorite method is to use a stack of dado blades. I think I remember you saying you were able to get a stack of these as well as the throat plate. And if you have them, the first thing you're gonna to need to do is remove the regular throat plate that comes with your saw because it's not gonna be wide enough for, to hold all of these blades. I don't have one for my saw that I could buy, so I just made this one and it works out fine. And I know in the last video I said to make sure you use your riving knife for all of your cuts. Well, that's just for cuts that go all the way through the wood. For dados and rabbits, you're gonna need to remove that riving knife. And of course, you'll have to remove the blade guard too. If you don't have a set of dado blades or anybody watching this doesn't have a set of dado blades, you can always make dados and rabbits with a regular saw blade. You'll just have to make a number of passes to widen that channel. And of course, another method for making rabbits and dados is to use a router and a router table. So to install these dado blades, you're gonna have two blades that look like regular saw blades, only they're, they're smaller diameter. So what you want to do is make sure you've got the teeth going in the right direction. Usually the logos will face out so that this one will go this way and then this blade will go this way. And that makes a small difference just because of the way that the teeth uh, might be beveled or angled a little bit. It's not that big of a deal. So put on one of the full size blades first all the way into the arbor. And then there's going to be these shims and there's gonna be two thick ones usually. And these are the ones that you want, you must use this first before you put on these chippers. And that prevents the teeth on the chippers from banging up against the teeth on the blade and causing them to break off. So what I'm gonna do is set that spacer or that shim in there, and then I'm gonna start adding these chippers. And it tells you how thick these are. These are eighth inch chippers, and I think there's some 16th inch ones, but for this, for these rabbits, we don't have to make these exact. What we wanna do is have this stack wider than 
three quarters of an inch or pretty close to that. You just don't want it to be less than three quarters. If it was less than three quarters of an inch, we would have to make a couple of passes to get that cut. So I'm gonna put that one on there. And then you don't need a shim between these chippers. So I'm just gonna put these on. And when you put these on, just make sure that the teeth aren't banging up against each other. These carbide teeth can just break off if they bang up against other carbide teeth. So here you can kind of see how I've got it, them all so they're not touching. Your dado stack will also come with a bunch more shims of different thicknesses and that's just to fine tune the width of the stack and that would be more used for making dados and grooves rather than rabbits. So with those on there, I'm gonna put this thick shim, this is the necessary shim on there and then I'll put this big blade on like that. And it's likely that this washer thing won't fit on that. It might be just be too many blades. It's okay, you can just put the, the nut on, back on the arbor. And one other thing, when you're tightening down these blades, well, when you're tightening down any saw blade on a table saw, don't really crank it down. Don't over tighten it. You only need it to tighten until it stops. If you over tighten it, it can be really difficult to get that off of there. So I'll give it a quick once over and just make sure that there's no teeth grinding together and that all the teeth are facing the same direction. You don't have anything in backward. It probably goes without saying, but you never wanna operate a table saw without this throat plate in place. So this is my homemade one that'll just drop in like that. Next you wanna lower the stack of dado blades so that it's gonna cut through half the thickness of your board. So these are three quarter inch boards, but they're usually not exactly three quarters and plus we, you've probably sanded it and made it a little bit smaller. So get it as close as you can and we'll run a test. You wanna look at the top of the tooth when it's at its highest point here. So it looks like this needs to come down. These don't have to be exact, but get it as close as possible. There's two different ways you can set up the rip fits for cutting these rabbits. You could set it up this way, and then you're gonna cut the rabbits along the edge like that. The problem with that is you're gonna have to adjust it to cut this way. Usually when I cut rabbits, what I like to do is cut them on this side. The problem here is that the blades are gonna scrape up against your rip fence. You can see where I've actually done that a couple of times. I wish I hadn't done that. So the way to prevent that is to just clamp a board on here and make what's called a sacrificial fence. This is the sacrificial fence I've been using for a while. You can see where I've been cutting into it here and there. This is a piece of plywood. If you have a scrap of plywood would, that'll be your best bet because that's going to be perfectly straight. If you just have, you know, a piece of solid lumber, that's fine too. Just make sure that it's nice and flat. And then what you want to do is just clamp it to your rip fence. And when you when you clamp it up here, just make sure that there's enough room that those clamps aren't, aren't going to interfere with your board. I've got these really neat clamps I got a long time ago that just clamp like this over the edge of the board. I've got holes in here and then they just clamp down like that. So you can see now I can move this all the way into that blade and have a zero clearance fence. This is a scrap board that I'm gonna use just to see how the width looks. So, you know, Looks like right about there. I wanna start off with making a cut that's probably a little bit too narrow and then widen it if I have to. It might seem a little intimidating at first with all of those blades in your saw, but keep in mind that you're not making a through cut. It's not cutting the board into two pieces, so there's no risk of kickback at you. Of course, that's a lot of blades there, and you wanna make sure that your fingers aren't anywhere near those. You never wanna cut rabbits or dados by hand just by pushing the board down, so always use your gripper or push block of some sort, and that'll keep your hands safely away from the blades. I'm gonna use this scrap board, and what I'm looking for here is the width. I wanna dial in the width of these cuts. I usually like to cut it twice. The second pass just kind of cleans up the cut. 
Here's my test and you can tell that I really cut it too deep, a lot deeper than I was expecting it to. So I'll, I'll drop those blades down a little bit, but I'm not as concerned with that. In fact, if you wanted it that deep, it's okay. What I'm concerned with is the width here. So this is the actual board, actual panel that's glued up that I'm gonna be using for the box. And I just wanna make sure that it fits flush in there. So there shouldn't be any overhang. And the best way to test that is just with your finger. It feels pretty close. I could probably make that rabbit just a little bit wider. First, I wanna reset that depth, so I'll drop the blades down about there. What I can do is move this fence back a little bit. I probably should have put on that last chipper. I think this is okay. Now what I can do is just run a test on this side of the board. Now it's time to cut the rabbits for real on all four of the panels that we cut earlier. To take a close look at the plan so you get an idea of how this is gonna work, what we're gonna do is cut the two short edges of the front and the back panels, and then all four edges on the top and the bottom panels. One tip, after you've glued up your panels, you might have noticed that maybe they're not completely flat. Maybe there's a slight curve on one side or the other. My suggestion is when you're cutting these rabbits to cut it with the con cave side against your table so that it won't rock. It's very likely that those rabbits aren't perfectly flat or even, and they will probably require some sanding. You're gonna to wanna to do this by hand. If you have just a small square block of wood, you can just hold a piece of sandpaper against it. You just want a firm, flat surface for sanding. You can even get one of these store-bought sanding blocks if you want, and it would just go on like this. And The reason why you want to do this rather than, I mean, you could do it by hand, but the chances are you're not going to keep it as flat as you can with a block. One of my favorite tools for sanding rabbits or dados is a sanding stick. And this is just one of those paint stirrers that they give away at home centers and hardware stores. And then I just used some spray adhesive and glued some sandpaper to it. Now you can have kind of your first inspirational moment where you have to get to actually see what this is going to look like, at least a hint at it. So I want to take my base and then I can just start adding these pieces to it. This will be the back and then the front. That wasn't good. The nice thing about using rabbit joints is they really do most of the squaring up work for you. It takes a little bit of work up front to make them, but then everything, once it's assembled in there, it takes a lot of that guesswork out of trying to square up the box. In fact, once I get this kind of set up here, even without those end pieces, it should just kind of stay put on its own. So this is why I asked you not to cut those end pieces earlier because the depth of these rabbits probably varies a little bit from what I have in the plans. So this way I can take an actual real world measurement here and cut out those end panels to size. Whenever the opportunity arises, always try to cut pieces to size. You never want to just go through a set of plans and cut all of the pieces first and then assemble the project because you're just gonna run into problems. Woodworking is not that exact. So what I wanna do here is just kind of temporarily clamp this together. I think it's gonna be easiest if I kind of flip it around this way. Like that. 
And if you have a strap clamp, that's what this thing is. It's great for picture frames and to assembling boxes. You can use that to hold this together temporarily while you take some measurements, but I don't think you have one of those. So you can just use your uh, F clamps, bar clamps, I forget what these are called, and just kind of clamp it together in two directions just so you can get an accurate measurement. The one thing you don't want to do is clamp these down too tight or it'll actually just dent the wood and make a mark. So just enough to where it's holding it together. What do you think? Is it starting to look like a shoe shine box a little bit? Not really. So now I can take a measurement on the inside of this rabbit. Air on the side of measuring a little bit too big to start with, and then we can just shave those down to get a good fit. The other thing to keep in mind before you cut this down is the grain direction. Remember where the top of the box is and the bottom of the box. So in this one, I'd rather have the grain continue all the way around the box since I've got the grain on the sides going this direction. I'd rather have it that way rather than the end pieces going up. I think it would just look kind of odd that way. Cross-cutting this panel is one of those kind of, it could go either way, whether you want to use your rip fence or your miter gauge. I'm going to use the rip fence for this just because this is so wide. Like, Miter gauge kind of hangs off a little bit, and I think I can keep this under control with my rip fence, but however you want to do it is fine. Plus, using the rip fence is just an easy way that I can get two exact lengths. I'm going to give this a test fit. I'm guessing it's too big. Yeah, it is. Which is what I was kind of hoping for, because now I can kind of really zero it in by shaving a little bit off at a time. Hopefully I'll get a nice snug fit here. Yeah. And you know, if for whatever reason you've got a little gap there or something that doesn't fit perfectly, don't drive yourself crazy. It's really probably not going to show once everything is all put together. Okay, now all we got to do is take it apart and glue it back together. So when you're ready to assemble projects, try to have everything ready and have a strategy in your head of how you're going to put it together once you've got the glue on there and where you're going to put the clamps. Have everything ready to go. I'm kind of notorious for not having everything ready to go. The nice thing is is that Tight Bond 2 wood glue has a pretty lengthy working time. So, you know, once it's on there, you've got at least a good 10 minutes to work with it and get everything adjusted right. So I think what I'm going to do is just kind of unfold this like this. It's going to work best if we glue the whole thing together all at once rather than in parts. And so that means what we got to do is put glue on all of these rabbits and then fold it together. So the thing about gluing these up is that you want the glue to be spread completely on that rabbit joint. There's two parts to that rabbit joint. There's this surface and then there's the shoulder surface this way. So you want to just make sure that you get the glue spread on both surfaces. I prefer just to use my finger for this. You know, you can use a brush if you want. There's really no way to know if you've got, you know, too much or too little glue. It just kind of comes with experience and just kind of knowing what the right amount looks like. You just don't want any dry gaps there. And if you see like big drops of glue or big blobs, that's probably too much. So what I'm doing is putting glue on all of the rabbits on these four pieces. The two end pieces, I'm not going to put glue on. Just gluing one surface is fine. You don't have to glue both, both surfaces. And just remember that once this is all done and assembled, nobody's going to see any of the flaws in it that you see. I can already tell you that I see a flaw in this one because I dropped this piece and it dented that corner right there. It's what makes it look handmade. Ain't no machine making these things. If you have your son available, get him to help you out with this because it would, a second 
set of hands is very helpful here. But man, I love using rabbit joints to assemble things. This is really how I assemble almost all of my projects because they're super strong because that's a lot of surface area for that glue to hold on to and because they're kind of self-squaring. Basically like every project, the more clamps, the better. And the main thing you want to do is make sure that you've got, you know what I know, oh, you know what I noticed here? There's a split in this wood. I think that's where I dropped it. It's okay, we can fix that. <laughs> what was I saying? Um, Oh yeah, points of contact. Okay, so you want pressure coming this way and you want pressure going this way. So ideally, you would have eight clamps to do that. You'd have four on each end. If you have more, it would be a good idea to put some in the middle too to kind of draw those together, especially if your boards aren't exactly straight or flat. You know what I'm trying to say. Yeah, that is some split right there. And like I mentioned earlier, just don't crank these down too tight where it dents the wood. I mean, if it does dent it, it's not the end of the world. You just sand it out, but as little of that as possible. One thing about using these black pipe clamps is make sure the pipe doesn't touch the wood because it always leaves a mark, like a black mark. I need to cinch down this middle part a little bit. It doesn't look like it's fitting that well and I'm gonna have to crank that down fairly tight. So I'm gonna use these blocks of wood here just to spread out that clamping weight or clamping pressure and prevent the boards from denting. Every glue up you do is gonna be different and you just have to approach each one by on its own merits. And if you see parts that aren't really going together nicely, just stick a clamp there if you have a clamp. And it'll just end up being this like Franken glue up. Again, if you've got gaps in between there, don't worry about that. We can fill those in and once we go to sanding this down, it'll look real nice. At this point, you probably need a break. So I would just let this dry overnight and then you can, next time you come into your shop, tackle it with a new enthusiasm. That's gonna be your first real bravery test, cutting that lid off. <laughs> I'll see you later.